short little lesson on how to make a long bow. I just lost my chalk here. I was trying to draw out the plans on the piece of board, but I just got it flung across the room with my bell sander. Uh, so I'd restart my video here. I don't have nothing to write with out here. But basically, um, when you're building a long bow, you can look up all kinds of plans. This is American flat bow. It's got a, fl it's flat here, nice and flat. It's got a nice bend to it. Um, and I forget, I think it's half inch or uh, 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, somewhere in there thickness. Um, you find a nice piece of hickory, locust, osage, ash. Uh, you can, there's all different ways you can make it, but the, your main woods is hickory, ash, locust, um, osage, orange, and yew. Okay, those are your good ones. But when you go and select a piece of wood, make sure your grain's straight this way because it's going to be bending this way. So this side of your bow is the flat side. That's where you want to have your flat side. And your roundness, which is you're going to profile the bow so it's round. So the flat part is what faces away from you. Okay. I suppose it doesn't really matter much, but it's just the, the way I've been doing it. So this is the back of your bow. You'll be holding it this way and be drawing back. And uh, the front is always the flat side. That's the flat, the flat is the belly is what it's called, faces away from you. Not the belly because the inside's the belly, but the flat faces away from you, the back of the bow. It's called the back because it's facing back away from you. And the belly of the bow is the round part. So what you do is you draw your center lines on your wood and you'll come from the tip to a certain distance out. So it'll come wider here and then it'll have another measurement. You measure in down to here. Then you'll be straight for the handle and then tapered back out to a certain point and then tapered back to the tip. So that's basically what you do. So you draw it out on the board. I cut it with the saw. You know, a lot of people, oh no, you got to do it by hand. I don't do it by hand. I've done a couple bows by hand and it takes forever. I do not have forever. I've got knives. As, you know, you see my other videos. I have knives and other stuff I tinker with. So this is a, a, a project for somebody, um, a friend on Facebook. He wanted a long bow made by me. I haven't made one. This would be the, probably about the 16th bow I've made and I've yet to make a good video on making a long bow. So I wanted to make one real quick so you know I could add to my videos and I've out here I have a rasp which I've used before um, surf form and I've got a wood rasp but once you once you make your edge of your bow and you've got it shaped out you just start getting away at the sides you know you just start profiling it and uh, toward the tip it's going to be round it's going to have a little roundness to it, a little square like that. Um, and these worked a little more. And as you see, you know the thinner part of the thinner part of the bow is going to be a little flatter. But you get toward the center, it's going to be almost perfectly round on the edges. And it's a flat bow, so it's going to be flat on top. The long bow, the English long bow, is narrower, but it's still round. It's it's not got that flat on it. That's why this is called the flat bow, which I like it. I think it's pretty cool. You see my lawnmower's covered in dust. My deer, my target, bow target's covered. Everything's covered in dust in here. I need a good dust system. Be hacking like crazy here later. But anyway, I'm getting close to being done. I mean, this is getting pretty profiled. You see that nice roundness on the sides and flatness, you know. And as it gets toward the handle, it gets square again. It stiffens up. Obviously, you don't want that round, and uh, that's how you do it. You, you know, it'll show you in the plans what to look for at certain points in the bow. Where do you want it round? Where do you want it squared? You know, tell you the measurement for the handle. Tell you everything. I mean, and basically, that, that's about it. Other than that, then you're just checking for your uh, your. Um, bend or it's called tillering when you start tillering the edges and getting them to bend right i'm going to set the phone down and you can see all this how well you'll be able to see so what i'm looking for now is i'm looking for a bend on the bow 
I'm going to stand over here. I don't know if you'll be able to see or not. But I'm looking, I'm looking for that nice bend on the bow where it starts to curve. See where it's stiff and where it's not. Um, I'm noticing on these, it's getting a little stiffer right in here on both ends. And I need to get it profiled more here because it's pretty stiff right here. It's bending, but not very, not as much as it should. So what I'll do is I'll sand this edge and I'll start profiling some more down this way. Right here, it's good, right in the center. I'm getting a nice flex to it. Um, and I, I'm not going to take it in the house and tiller it, which means I, I, you draw your chalk lines, or in my kitchen I have tile and it's got straight lines. And you make a little jig, take a board, and you draw your inches, your draw, draw length out. You know, I go from, I start at, I think, I don't know, 15 inches because that's about where I get it to pull. <clears throat> and I'll string this bow up, make my knock ins, and I'll pull it and I'll see where it's been. And, and you want a nice, it'll show you on the plans, you want a nice curve. And as you draw the bow back, the bow will start to bend one way or the other. And uh, if, if it starts turning and twisting up off the floor or down toward the floor, that means one side stiff. Like if it's bending this way, it means this side stiff, so I need to profile that edge some more and weaken it on that side. That way when I pull it like this, it's not twisting. It's not pulling one way or the other. You want it to pull the exact same. So that's what I'll check on the, on the floor. And plus your tips need to be right across, right straight across. Um, on some of the bow builds, it says one tip, like the lower tip, will be a little stiffer because obviously you have three inches hanging down here, so it'll be a little stiffer down there. So the top part of the bow will pull an inch more on the one side of, of your line. It might, you know, and, and I found out it's been about that far, an inch or two. It ain't, I think an inch, really. It ain't much, but you'll want it like that. Nice curve to it, nice bend. You don't want it bending right here. You know, you don't want it bending just at the tip so you have a, you know, a straight and then a bend, you want a nice curve to it. And as you can see, it's starting to get a nice curve to it. So, I'll, I'll measure out on my stick 12 inches, 13 inches, and like this guy has a 28 inch draw. So I'm, I'll want to start pulling down to 28, but you don't want to pull too fast. You know, I'll pull it down until I feel the, the weight of it. Um, and, and go from there basically by feel until I get it close and then I'll take what I've been doing which I do I think have a scale a spring scale that I can hang from the ceiling against the wall and I'll chalk out lines on the wall at my 28 inch draw length and an inch up every line will be an inch up and I'll hook the scale up here and then I'll hook the bowstring to my scale so, put a, well actually, the bow will be up higher, be hanging on the wall and the hook. And I'll attach to the bowstring the scale down to a pulley. And, and when I pull on that, that scale will tell me how many pounds it is and what draw length. And I want it at 45 for deer hunting, legal limit, 45 pounds in a while. So I'll pull on that, but it, right now I've been using a bathroom scale and I'll put a stick on the scale with a fork and a little two by two. There might be a four by two, but it'll set right in that. And when I pull down on the string, that 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 uh, measuring stick that I have have notches cut out. I'll hook the string in the notches to my 28 inch draw. When I'll pull down to that 28, I'll look at the scale and see what the weight is, what the poundage is, and I'll want it at 45. You know, if it's 50, I might just leave it at 50 because it will soften up as you use it. The more you use the bow, the more you flex the wood, it'll soften up a little bit. So, I mean, I could even go a 60 pound, well, I don't want to go 60 pounds, he requested 45. So, I'll go 50. That way, once he gets to using it, it's been strong, it starts, you know, starts to bend, start to, starts to flex, it'll soften some. It's not going to stay 50 pounds forever, it'll weaken. So, that's what I'll shoot for, but like I said on, on the videos, you can look up all kinds of videos on crossbows, longbows, you know, English, 
American, you know, there's all kinds of videos, but I just wanted to shoot this one. Um, take your time, make sure you ain't got no knots in the wood. I got a little knot right here. I don't know if you can see the camera, but there's a little knot right here in the wood, and luckily that's right where my knock is going to be, where I file, put a file mark from for putting the string on, so it's not going to inhibit the bow at all. I was afraid at first it might, but it, it'll be fine. It's not going to hurt it at all. But I've had bows where I've had a, a knot right here, and that sucks. You know, just because you don't see a knot in the wood doesn't mean it ain't there, because it's going to pop up, and I've had it happen. Actually, this wood um, is lighter on this side, or darker on this side than it is this side, because of you know, I'm getting into some different, you know, a little bit of the sap wood. And, you know, it's, it's alright. It ain't going to hurt it none. Um, and the one side is just a little stiffer than the other. But it gives it some character too. I got some, a lighter color at an angle. And it happens to be right where this burl walnut is. And once I get this handle profiled nice, that'll be a beautiful handle. You know, that burl walnut's just gorgeous. But um, basically that's all there is. Just patience. Lots of patience. Make sure you got good wood. Make sure your grain's running right. And you want a prime piece of wood. You don't want a warped piece of wood if it's warped. Um, you know, if it's if you're going down the down the wood and it's got a little bit of bow in it, you can snap your chalk line. But I'd suggest trying to find a straighter piece of wood. You know, it, you're better to spend thirteen dollars on a piece of hickory than than to cheat. Um, actually, this piece of wood right here had a little bit of sap wood on the edge but I'm not using that part a little bit here I knew once I profiled it that it would shave it right off so that that did matter to me you know that's coming off anyway so yeah that's fine I'm gonna set this wood down just take your time do your measurements right slow go slow if you screw up you know You've spent a lot of time to screw up, so take your time. Don't don't rush through it because you rush through it, you're going to take off too much wood, and you're going to have a 20-pound bow. But that's my video. I just wanted to post it. You know, I haven't seen very many. I haven't looked for them, but I know I didn't have a video of how to make a, a long bow or flat bow on my my YouTube. So I figured I'd make one to show you that I'm capable, and you know that. Uh, I do make other things other than my knives and my sheaths and holsters. So I think I was due to make a video on how to make a long bow. Now my belt sander, um, this has saved me a lot of time than using that uh, surf, on, surf on. I mean, it's a lot of hand work. I mean, it does remove a lot of wood. This is getting where it needs replaced. I wore the crap out of it. And uh, I got a wood rasp in there. I've been using it. Worked real good. But I did use the rasp uh, up until a point. It gouges the wood pretty good. So now I'm at the point with the belt sander, and uh, I'm going. Uh, this is uh, 60 grit right here. And once I get it real nice to close to where I'm at, I'll drop down. You know, I'll, I'll move up to probably 120 or 220. Smooth it out. You know. You do want to make sure you sand it down smooth because you're going to be drawing on this bow, and all you know when you when you're drawing on that, these, this wood wants to splinter outward, so it's real important that you get the the back of the bow nice and smooth. You don't want any little little defects that'll pop out that grain will. I've, I've I've had to do it and I've had to back the bows. If you have one that does do that. Um, I, I was making one for my son, a short one. I wanted to make a short one. Well, the problem with short ones is you're flexing it a lot more than a long bow. It's not going to have a tight as bend as a short bow will. And what happened was I had a little defect. Uh, I don't know if there's, there ain't one on this one. Where the splinter just started to pop up. And I'm like, nope, I spent too much time on this. I don't want to back it, but I'm going to back it. And uh, I used some fiberglass tape. And it's self-adhering fiberglass tape, and I, I did the trick off YouTube. Somebody had posted the video, and uh, you back it with a sticky fiberglass tape for drywall, and then you take some uh, good Elmer's glue, or uh, you know you could use epoxies or whatever, clear epoxy, 
and just fill in like like Bondo on that on that tape. And it's just like back in your bow. It ain't gonna hurt a thing. You could even use some fiberglass resin, make it nice and smooth, sand it smooth. That fiberglass resin and the fiberglass tape will adhere right to it. And it'll be backed, and when you draw back, it gives it more weight. It's it you know it's not gonna splinter. And after I did that, I thought, you know, there's some bow wraps. It would be cool to do some bow wraps on that little short bow. So I found some camo bow tape, you know, for wrapping up stocks and bows. And, and I wrapped that bow with some bow tape. And it looked pretty cool, man. My son, he loved it. It was a neat looking little bow. He still got it, I believe. Pretty sure he still has it. And, uh, you know, the handle, you can use rope, wrap, take some braided fishing line and put it on here. And just take your time and wrap it real nice. You can have a braided handle. I've used sinew before. Um, I've clear coated them. You don't even have to clear coat them, but I clear coat them with some. Uh, uh, I think it was shell yeah. I used shellac. Shellac the bow. Once you shellac it, obviously you put a clear coat on it. It will, you know, keep from anything splintering up. But this this one's real nice. This wood is really nice. So I'm not going to have any problems with it. But it's still going to get shellac. And. Uh, you know, you can you can make paint little designs on your bow, but it's fun. I enjoy it. Thanks for watching. I won't bore you any longer, but just wanted to shoot a quick video.